Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Turok is getting a Linux port. Nope, not that one. Not the new one. Or the other one. That's slightly older. No, the really old one. And have you ever played a game made with Blender Game Engine? Mmm, I did. It was terrifying, but more on that, coming up. Gog's going to start selling more visual novels. Looks like they want to afford a nice boat. And Steam is cut loose from iTunes. It's like a baby's arm holding an apple. Valve's dubious quest against anime titties is on hold. Guess they finally found an excuse to keep doing nothing. And someone else asks the what the best gaming distro is. But what is the frequency, Kenneth? Hey man, at least they didn't ask what the fuck said. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual Switching the Bits every week, 301st time. Um, here in Athens, joined every week by... Master Swing, what's up, babe? There he is, Canadian I'm, boy. I'm, I'm, melt, I'm melting. He is. Oh, he God. was bitching about that all during the pre-pre super shows, and, and the man who lives in humidity, Central Britannia. Hello, what, Pedro? Yes, <laughs> yes, ninety-four percent. Yeah. Lightweight, joining us with Shot Realm Dynamic, our favorite part of the show, helping us for the most special bit. Notice, Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, what is up? Before we get started, we like to rock and roll and just kind of catch up, see what's going on. Because, we, listen, we straight up do our best not to talk to each other during the week. And mm -hmm. um, I, I got a gang of shit that's been going on with uh, audio because Mad Eye, Mad High, kind of threw an audible at us. And I was like, God damn it, because I'd ordered one of those XLR decks to like, experiment with, which I told Pedro. I was like, Pedro, you're my guinea pig. Maddie's like, I'm going to order you one too. I'm like, fuck, now I got two of them. Might as well. <laughs> so they do work. They're up and running. That's the thing. And uh, yeah, this audio bullshit is going to be the enemy, man. It's not the drinking. It wasn't the drugs. It wasn't downhill rollerblading. The audio stuff. Um, well, I, 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 for one, am hoping for street luge because that's what I have 50 bucks on. I've always wanted to do that. I've never found one that quite fit me. <laughs> One, 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 one day I'm going to be a very rich man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is all I'm saying. What's up, J-Baby? Oh, not much, not much. Um, I, I don't know. Doing, doing, doing the contractor gig, still getting used to you know running a business. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's an ongoing lesson. It, there, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's an experience. It's fun, isn't it? Oh man, mm. I'm as, as my dad says, I'm in the business of accounts receivable now. So now I gotta chase after people to get paid. Oh, that's the <laughs> best part, man! Invoicing, yeah. I can tell yeah, you about some yeah. software after the show that uh, will help you out with that. Oh yeah, no, there, there, there's a, there's a thing. There's actually a Toronto company called FreshBooks that does this exact shit. That's exactly what I use is FreshBooks. So yeah, all right. I, I, I almost got, I almost got a job there too, actually. But, oh, uh, right on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, it'd be great if you could get a job with them as a contractor, then like straight up <laughs> invest yeah. them with their own software. <laughs> but then they just end up making more money. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I got to figure out a way to make this actually make me rich. Pedro, what about you? How, how's, how's not being rich? Well, uh, I have a manky old laptop that I'm trying to restore. It's a ThinkPad X240. It's uh, it's all scratched up. You're gonna you can see the you're gonna turn your mark to a the bottom here. Laptop? Primate laptop. It, it's 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 a laptop. It works. Uh, the elusive IBM Primate is it? What? <laughs> he, well, he, he called it a manky laptop. Shut up. It's it's a Pokemon thing. All right. I don't know these things. <laughs> you damn kids. All I know is I had to replace the motherboard because a couple of the headers, including the one for the internal battery, were a bit broken, and I wasn't uh, having that. So yeah, the laptop itself was free. The motherboard was not. Hmm. Well, uh, one thing that is free each and every week is our horse. We drag it out. We beat the shit out of it. Um, to tell everyone not. Uh, yeah, not, not, not so much a rented mule, but more of an abandoned horse. It's the Steam Linux Update of the Rye. Hey, I was ready this week, bitches. What's up? All right. <laughs> well, it uh, looks like Valve put the brakes on because they heard a bit of a rumor. A rumor that maybe, um, what did they used to call themselves? Morality and media it may have been behind the pressure that was put on PayPal, which in turn uh, got to Valve. 
and well, uh, morality and media. If you don't know them, I'm gonna be you. honest with you. Uh, I don't like seeing Honey Pop turn in this because, out of all things, Honey Pop is actually a legitimate damn game compared to everything yep. else I've seen listed. That is an actual bejewel type game. Uh, it's got some flash, anime titties flash, in it, flash and simulator. so. <laughs> Uh, the this particular uh, group, those look like some people that media. need to play some money pop, and they look a little bit <laughs> up if you know what I'm saying. It's... Uh, they uh went up to PayPal and they put the pressure on PayPal, and then PayPal put the pressure on Valve, and Valve sent some mildly threatening letters to some developers last week. This week, though, uh, after the community uproar and this particular uh bit of uh news came to be because. The uh, National Center of Sexual Exploitation, formerly known as Morality and Media, uh, were bragging on Twitter that, uh, oh, we won. Uh, we're getting rid of uh, the porny stuff on Steam. Our kids won't be tainted anymore. And Valve said, you, <laughs> what <Taint."> now? <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to get Valve to just put the kibosh on doing anything, not that that's hard that's just their default state but hey that looks like the anime titties aren't going anywhere anytime soon well I'm, and i mean it, this was exactly what i was talking about last week when i brought up like pearl clutching concern trolling people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where like oh yeah so center for what, what the hell is this thing called it has it has some really obtuse name national that, center the, the, on sexual exploitation they used to be known as morality and media yeah national center for sexual exploitation yeah they're like oh no we're not anti-nudity we're just anti-pornography the problem is that, that distinction is just so fine and so arbitrary and it changes depending on who you ask that it basically so doesn't exist as in, 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 fact, in, in fact simpsons did it already Bar there was a mark simpson episode about freaking michelangelo's david about this very thing they, uh, you know what it, it's it's so dumb uh it, but you know here, here's the thing valve is a private service they can set whatever rules they want um and i at least at least this generated enough of a stir that it caused valve to sort of backtrack because it's it's another one of those things where if the pr is bad enough then they'll do something about it or they'll roll back mm -hmm. in their decision because they want people to keep using steam true and Steam is lighting their pockets. That is their big, big money maker. So yeah, no, you don't want to scare people away from that. That's what's paid the bills. Uh, this is another thing in a long line of Steam. This is all bullshit. Uh, a just Steam being Steam, not reacting to anything, not putting any sensible any. Because think about how many times have you with a game that you've owned that you went from the Steam client to check the discussions or whatever, and it gives you that fucking pop-up. And it's like, are you old enough to play? Yes, Valve, I own this. Mm -hmm. That there are ways that have been invented for you to save this information. And just basic checks and shit like that. Uh, they, they some, sort of, some sort of base of data, you might say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do want to thank non-person on the Twitters for pointing this story out, pointing us in the direction. It, it, I had to go through a few just to find this one, because apparently this is a political thing, and we don't do politics on this show, so to find one that wasn't, like, slanted, like, I, I felt both sides, and it's like, wow, you people are bored. Um, <laughs> both of you, on whatever two-party team that there is. All right, coming up next. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, you know, morality in media is not the only one who's causing Valve some grief. Uh, Apple has decided that they do not want the Steam Link app on the iTunes store anymore despite the fact that it went through their large their long arcane approval process i've had some fun mm -hmm. uh, dealing with um, the apple approval process and submitting apps to that so like here, here, here's the thing apple will uh, like uh, like uh, what much was much like with steam apple is a private service they can do whatever the hell they want on their service because they make you read through a 27 page eula that apparently if you actually sat down and read it read it would take like three weeks to actually go through uh, so to, to essentially allow them to do whatever, but they're saying, no, well, we didn't, we didn't see it before, but there's a business conflict. Uh, Valve is trying to sit, was trying to defend themselves saying, well, this is really just a remote desktop app, just like every other remote desktop app, like Citrix or whatever else on the iTunes store. But, uh, Max or Apple's like, nope, nope, can't have it. Can't have it. So all I can really say about this is Apple to offer Xbox streaming confirmed. No. Okay. <laughs> see that that's. 
bizarre enough to where it could happen. Um, here's what I'm. Here, here's something I'm just curious, man. I mean, is this legitimately the ghost of Steve Jobs not wanting anyone to play games on their Apple TV or their IPDA Pros without Apple I, I getting think a cut? I just want them to play on their Apples. Period. Oh, or are they scared people will realize that they bought vastly overpriced inferior hardware not really capable of gaming? I think the crux of the issue here is more on Apple not getting a cut than anything else. Is uh, because, yes, it's a remote desktop client, but it's a remote desktop client to a storefront. A storefront designed to sell things, games, very popular video games. It is, it holds the monopoly in the whole of the PC ecosystem. And Apple is seeing none of it. Yeah, there's a business conflict there. <laughs> but, I, I mean, it boils down to, this is what I don't understand. You're not selling games with this app. You're just playing the ones that you currently have. This just seems like a... Right. Well, but you so can here, buy the them thing. still While, while, I, was, while the I was working on a Mac... One thing, one thing that came up, when, the odd time that um, like I had to go to the App Store to like install a piece of software or whatever, I saw ads for games that I had already owned on Steam. So clearly, uh, clearly Apple wants to slice that market segment, but they and and they're they're just kind of hoping that they can leverage their vendor lock-in to scrape by. But I, it's not going to really accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. They they just don't have the market presence. Nope. True, true. All right, moving on to Steam game updates. Yes, so there's a bit of a, an update to our favorite after shows and bait game. The Rocket Cars, yes. The uh, well, Salty what do you mean, Shores the, update the, the is here. The people are only watching to know when to get into Rocket League this evening. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> yeah. Sensible people at that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on May 29th, that's... Tuesday, uh, there will be a bit of an update for the rocket cars, and they will have a new arena, Salty Shores. Uh, they will also have the new Impact Crate. Uh, competitive Season 8 will start on that day as well, and they introduced some quality of life improvements, uh, including a new report server button uh, for when a server misbehaves during a match. Really? A report server? Mm-hmm. All right, that's an issue. Listen, those, server, <laughs> those servers can get pretty mouthy sometimes. They say Listen, some stuff that you know, <laughs> straight up don't agree with. At, at first, I was like, that doesn't make sense. But then I was like, yeah, they genuinely want to know if one of their servers is shitting itself. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, that, All right. That, that's, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely reasonable, of, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean the, the, new, the new map doesn't look like it's doing anything incredibly fucky like the like the circle map or that one it's kind of like a like a bathtub the raised ledges <laughs> yeah. yeah oh man no, or, the or the, or the, the one with like it, it's like the, the the there are actually two goals that you have to defend and they're separated by that thing this, this just mm -hmm. looks like another run of the mill sunny map it does but you know i kind of wish that they would do some more bizarro like that bathtub map because or just the circle map because that really changes the entire dynamics. Now, I wish they had improved the camera on that map. Mm -hmm. I, I wish they'd improved the camera in general. Because... Yeah. That's part of the charm, baby. Um, they let you uh, tweak the camera, to be fair. Linux plus SteamOS, now in beta it is. Uh, we're happy to announce that the Linux and SteamOS builds of Turok is now playable. Yep, right-click, properties, go into the beta. You can do it, and I first read about this because our old friend IckyBots was like, yo, over to his Patreon, support him on Patreon, I do. Um, oh, that gold cartridge, man. Oh, man, it's the thing. <laughs> Jordan's like, oh, nostalgia. And I was like, oh, you sweet young child. Uh, but here's the thing, man. Ickyless, he loved Night Dive, and he went back, and he's like, all right, th this isn't like a wine-wrapped anything. This is an engine re-implementation. This is some weird, bizarre moon shit that he's cut through. Um a flexible 3d engine from scratch slotted the turok data into the game logic or the game logic into that uh it's not a port of the original n64 game so much as a rebuild of it and i was kind of excited about all right here's the thing i was excited about it because we were talking earlier before we went live is i think pedro had the same idea it's like wait wasn't there a turok game that was recently released ish you know in like the last decade and mm -hmm. i, I kind of thought it was that i went to go check it out i was like whoa this is like the one i used to play with the 3dfx card back in the dark dark um 
<laughs> that's the one I played on the yeah. PSP. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's the one I remember going to Blockbuster and renting as a child. So <laughs> this, this is that, that's true. that's definitely a thing. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I was I the, when I when I first heard about that, I'm like, what? Like the 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 recent 3D Turok? No, the N64 one? Really? I I I guess I'm okay with them porting N64 games to Linux. I, I don't yeah. object to it in any like particular grounds. What do you think the reason was not to do the PC port? Because yeah, there was a that's, that's the only place I've ever played Turok was on PC. And I, it, yeah. it, it might be one of those things where like they lost they lost the OG code, but they had enough of the N64 code that they could you know use it. Yeah. And here's the thing, uh, Night Dive Studios, if you actually click on their name in Steam, you'll see that they have an entire library of old games that they've ported to Linux. And this is basically running off of their engine with the disassembled code from what they could get from the PC version. And, well, they basically just worked off of it. So that's that's kind of impressive. <laughs> No, I mean, it's definitely a good thing. Uh, but the one thing that did hit me was sticker shock. Was uh, I went to the store, I was like, yeah, I'll pick this up, fuck around with it. I'm thinking big, big spin, maybe 10 bucks. nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap. This is a little pricey. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit. Now, uh, Achilles has definitely hinted. He's like, I can't say anything, but I'm nodding my head right now. Um <laughs> But he's like, yo, uh, what about Turok 2? Because that's got a uh, multiplayer editor. He's like, I can't say anything, um, but okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I remember Turok 2 def- definitely had split-screen multiplayer. You think they're going to actually try to do the online multiplayer? The Steam version currently Steam. on Steam has online multiplayer. So, Bring uh, in Flibbit. Well, Bring there's... in Flibbit for the online multiplayer. <laughs> right, that way one of us can be stuck on the back of the screen and the other ones have to beat that person up in order to get to the... We love you. Yeah, yep. um, it's it's high quality network code. Hey, uh, absolutely. If you're listening to what we're about to talk to talk about next on Wednesday, uh, just go ahead and skip forward like three or four minutes. Oh yeah, yep. uh, So this is Gibbs of Vigorous Alliance. It's it's free. Uh, or yes, it is still free. Okay, it ends on Tuesday. Uh, so chances are, if you're catching this by the time it comes out, or even on Tuesday proper, uh, you'll still be able to get it. Uh, that's before 10 a.m. Pacific time. And Guns of Icarus was one of the first games to show up on Steam for Linux uh, after it left beta. And it was a very fun game. I spent a lot of time, like 80-something hours, playing this game. And this was the... Very delayed, very overpromised um, story mode, multiplayer, and which they finally, yeah. finally uh, delivered. And it is free, so uh, if you want it, go get it right now. It's still multiplayer. You still, uh, if you want the best experience, you still want at least four people to play the game and uh, just to have the full crew for the ship. And you'll have a bit of a story mode. You're mostly playing against the AI, but they do introduce some bits of uh, actual competitive multiplayer. Uh, help, help me out here. I'm looking at the system requirements. It requires 1204 LTS with Linux machine configuration not supported. I, I've missed that checkbox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well you, you got to be running like the herd variant of Ubuntu, right? Well, I guess if you We're already have the uh, DirectX 9C compatible dedicated graphic dedicated graphics card with it, yeah, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. oh shit! No, that was the other thing from the uh, from the uh, Apple story I wanted to bring up for like the tinfoil hat thing is DirectX 12 is coming to Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know how that would work. Uh, Guns of Icarus, Icarus, however you want to do it. Uh, it's an alright game. We've all that has been like something for years. We're like, we need to get together and play that, and it still has yet to happen. But go pick it up yeah, for a low, mm-hmm. low price of free, and uh, maybe we'll do that. I, I, th- I think with like the regular like Rocket League audience, we could probably pull it off with like four players on each side. Yeah, because it's not bad enough when we're, we're stuck to the ground, is it? Is it? No, no, we need to be in the <laughs> No, let's put everyone in blimps. Yeah. <laughs> no, see, what we need to do is try to play Rocket League in Guns of Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets to be the ball? We need a blimp mode for Rocket League. 
All right. T- 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 psionics, <laughs> do that what you will. Never split the party is some good advice if you've ever played a role-playing game. It's also a new we have Mr. Pixel Dungeon Crawler game in early access. Um, no price on it just yet, but it ha- it's essentially just a multiplayer Zelda. It does have some interesting mechanic, though, in the sense that each person in your party exposes a different bit of information, like your inventory or the map or all the players' he- health totals. And if you lose sight of the one particular player, then you lose that information, period. So it sort of encourages you to stick around together. And of course, if we ever play... Uh, I'm going to stop you right now. Yeah, Pedro Pedro does not get to fucking play this then. (laughs) Yeah. Because Pedro's strategy to any multiplayer game is to fucking tear off by himself and leave everyone. I I know that That is literally what I was saying. if If we ever did play this... Like, we just immediately split off and go into different fucking areas. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's it's interesting. That sort of gameplay is kind of hard to pull off because people just sort of clump together. I guess there are enemies that will cause you to go to different rooms and whatnot, and I guess that 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 is that is a thing. One thing that doesn't sit right with me about this game, though, is apparently the game will be free, but you get one base class and you got to pay for all the other classes. Mm. I don't think this game's going to last long enough for that to actually come to fruition. Prove me wrong, The online guys. multiplayer wrong, roguelike Legends. type of thing has me curious. I really do hope that those microtransactions don't fuck it up all that much. Yeah. Hope. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely take a look at it when it comes out. Uh, nothing to freak mm-hmm. out about, though, right? Yeah. All right. Um, what is it? Uh... <laughs> Oh, that thing didn't... Uh, yeah, Freak Out, Calamity TV show. Um, so I, I saw this and I'm like, this is basically... And it, t- it took me like several minutes to remember the name for Teleglitch. Because oh, it's yeah, essentially yeah, that yeah. sort of game. Um, without, without like the distinct Although visual Teleglitch styles, was kinda. less uh, bullet spammy than this. A, a, a little bit more. But it, it that, that that's the sort of vibe it gave me. It's I, like I don't know, man. Uglier, I, I, that's the first time I've watched the video. I'm definitely getting like a top-down Contra vibe from Mm-hmm. Well, that, that was kind of what Teleglitch was. If you say so. Um, anyway, and exactly. anyways, it's, it's it's a run and gun mm-hmm. shmup. Um, the the whole premise is it's like a purge reality TV show type thing. Run around, shoot stuff. Will it be good? I don't know. We got to find out in July. Um, Listen, we we, man, we don't, we don't know if it's going to have like procedural level generation either, um, or if it's going to be. It's got a the, sonic the level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, again, yeah, we're uh, we've find been out seeing July, a lot. We've been seeing a lot of these top-down shmups lately, with varying degrees of pixel uh, hipster pixelness to them. But we've been seeing mm-hmm. a lot of these. It's like, what's going on? Is there like a thing, a bit of a fad with the uh, in the developers for uh, top-down shmups right now? I guess they're really easy to make. Is the one thing. Yeah, and also I think that is like one of the most common types of games you see because I guarantee you that's Unity. I mean, that is like a how many? Yeah, of, yeah how, that screams Unity. Yeah, how, how many of that top-down game have we played? But this one looks competent, maybe. So maybe again, we'll, it, it's we'll just find out spoon. kind of sad. Even if it is extremely competent, it's just like we're, we are genuinely burnt out on that mode of gameplay because we've seen it done mm-hmm. so poorly so many times. Assault, Adroid Cactus was a good one, uh, Artane. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, those are few and far between. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, cults. Cults and my Linux. Cult, cults and cards, man. Cults, cults Against Humanity is, is the name of the game here. This is the cultist, this cultist simulator. It's uh, from uh, Weather Factory and Humble Bundle. Um, this, um, it's from the, uh, from the creator of Sunless Sea, which is interesting. And the gameplay itself seems kind of neat because um, instead of like a straight sort of spreadsheet simulator, it's stre- it's presented as a card game, which could be, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'd, you'd, I'd actually have to spend some time playing this to, to sort of make a judgment of whether or not this is good. But there, there's like a there's like a Lovecraftian element to it. You can build out your cult. You can contact elder gods. You can go build a compound in Guyana and make people drink poison flavor aid. Um, apparently, apparently the games themselves will, um, or the game is about 20 to 40 hours. It's a lot of, that's a lot of cards. Uh, Doesn't require an operating system. That's a lot of cards. Uh, I've I've watched this video and I still have fuck clue what's going on. 
So yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, it's totally like one of those games. things where if you sit through the tutorial, they'll be like, "Oh, I don't get it." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I played Magic the Gathering for many years, uh, and I still was like, uh, "Okay, mm-hmm. all right." <laughs> Uh, I guess it it is a wait and see. Definitely, it comes out on May thirty first. So, it was published by Humble. That was the most interesting bit about this. Hmm. Okay, we yeah. covered uh, racing last week, so we need to do a little racing this week with the uh, hipster pixel variety. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, don't worry, this is not a preview of what's going to happen in the uh, chair Q edition. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, it, this this what this is a different one. This is Slipstream. Uh, uh, last week we talked about Horizon Chase Turbo. Uh, this one Slow. is a bit more hipster pixely, as it were. Uh, they say that it's just an arcade style racing game inspired by the um, the spirit of the early nineties. Hey man, I'm going to say this. This genuinely tracks. looks like it could have been on the Mega Drive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it does. Def- the color palette definitely reminds me of a Dixie cup. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it's Precious. a bit cheaper than uh, Horizon uh, Chase Turbo was, uh, so that's something to look at. It's more uh, along the lines of Outrun than. Uh, well, it definitely seems Horizon to have Chase some Turbo. Gran Turismo drifting. It's like you—you got to drift. Yeah. Even when you go straight, yes, you—you you, you, you drift to go straight too. Why not? <laughs> press, yeah, but press it looks to go nice. <laughs> they are talking about multiplayer. Latest update as published uh, brings minimum requirements down of jail. Where's the multiplayer bit? I uh, don't see anything about it. Uh, it's the 1.0.1 patch. It's uh, they say that it will yeah, have uh, local one point one, oh. one will include local multiplayer, which okay. is wrong. One one point one. I, I I would say let's let's maybe not focus on one point one. Maybe focus on one point five when you have network multiplayer, and then come back and call us sister. Yeah, um, yeah. That should have definitely either do single player or do online multiplayer. The local multiplayer for a lot of this stuff. I don't know if I'm digging it because you know it does seem like 2018 is definitely becoming the year of single player retro racing. Um, yeah, no, this one I would have praised it if they went, no, it's a single player experience. We fine tuned it for the single player experience. And okay, yeah, I could have respected that. But no, it's uh, it's going to have the bitch version of multiplayer. So, mm. meh. All right, that's going to do it. Yep, this is it. Bye, horse. Coming up next. Nay. Hey, 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 man, you want, you want, you want to spend two grand on a monitor? You want to spend three grand on a monitor? Nay. You want to spend four grand on a monitor? Nay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between, hello. Welcome to the news. Yes, I'm totally going to hijack this segment to tell you about our new line of products. No, just kidding. We're not getting into that just yet. Listen, but man, I was just looking at mannequins on Amazon, so you better tell me about this new line of products before I go order this stuff. <laughs> listen, listen, no, listen we, see, we're here uh, to the, announce the, fine, the fine latest iteration of the Linux Gamecast Real Dolls. You can have in, in fuckable likeness, myself, Pedro, Ven, and Foxy. Empty dolls are incoming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where I Okay, go Jordan, this tell people how go they go can go find go that Linux particular Gamecast. video. Click the support button, man. We got, we got, if, you, if you actually want to see some real dolls, <laughs> this is how you actually get that done by giving us money so that we can make some prototypes. You can do that by clicking on some Amazon affiliate links, doing affiliate links, humble affiliate links. Basically, if you shop somewhere, we can take a cut and it doesn't cost you anything. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we got also uh, Bitcoin links and the like over there if you want just want to give us some money. And, of course, there's uh, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast where all the cool people go. We're at 249 bucks a week. So, every, uh, well, per episode, per week. Comes with a bunch of cool stuff. Like, um, essentially, we're streaming five days a week now. We get, we get two days off. Um, and becoming a Patreon gives you access to the Discord server, you get access to the show notes, all sorts of cool stuff. It's all on the page. You people are capable of reading. At least I hope you are. If not, well, uh, I need you to sign this check for $2. <laughs> Anyways, we got some, we got some uh, people we got to thank, though. Uh, Matt K 
is our latest and greatest Patreon. And we got uh, Yishan, who um, has who is rejoining us back in the fold. It's great, um, man, because a, now we, we have two people straight another up way to support uh, us. speaking French in Discord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but uh, money is not the only thing you can give us to support us. You can give us hardware. Why don't what? you tell me about that, then? No, man, I, I'm, I'm still <laughs> traumatized by having two French people in Discord. Uh, I'm just <laughs> kind of joking around. Hey, uh, different what? kind of hardware there. Hardware, <laughs> talk about real dolls, <laughs> le real dolls. Oh man, we, we, the French. St- never mind. Le, 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 le vrai dolls. No, no, go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing you can do, uh, what a ton of people have done, is uh, pick up stuff off of our wish zone. That's why Frank shows up and he's like, "Boom, I got to find upstanding cannibal wall." I really don't think maybe we could squeeze two more on here before we have to go to the fuck wall three point oh, but. Uh, if you do do that, you get to send in a little notes. And I have two little notes because uh, Maddie fucked us up last week and uh, Bradley threw it in. I want to say for Maddie, last week gave us mention because uh, we were sorting out some audio. We were upgrading from our little like $7 DAX that we've been using for years to some XLR business. Uh, it was real nice. I ordered one as an experiment. Maddie's like, you know what? That, that's not dangerous enough. So we ordered another one. It's like, wow, I hope both of them work under Linux because I have no idea. <laughs> I just ordered that. Turns out they did. Uh, hang on. We, we got a... You can get a good look at them. I have them hooked up. I've even named them, as you can see. They're really nice. We, we have our Giggletron 9000 and uh, Yudin. So... Yudin? Yudin. You, you don't know your German? I no, no never mind. Uh-huh. Uh so so uh and what, what and we got we got uh, Bradley too. He sent some stuff in too. Yeah, he's got some Bradley, but I'm going to get around to it, sweetheart. Quite rushed me, baby. Mm. I, I know you want to get to those real dolls, but uh <laughs> oh, I really do. Mad, Maddie threw this in, man. I, I want to read these cuz you you get to force me to read these. Or any bunny you want. Mary fucking 300. I couldn't say this on Wednesday show. <laughs> From Maddie 19. Sweet and to the point. Color filters. Ugh. Look at them. Blue. I can't. They're filtering colors. More blue. You have none. Clear. I have the red one plugged in right now. I'm going to play around with uh, lighting this uh, place up a little bit better. Mm. And uh, that's neat. But let's see. What do we have? Uh, hi, Vin. I've been listening for a bit. Got busy. I suck. No, you don't. Uh, listening now, so I thought I'd show you guys some support. Enjoy the gels. Mm, how you doing? That's from Bradley. Ooh. Bradley himself. That's brilliant. Thank you. Right. You're so cute. All of you. Send us Twitch oh, bits. That, Wait, that doesn't matter. I, I just, I just want to squeeze your cheeks <laughs> and rip them off and then eat them. You know, if what? we were replaced by real dolls, how long do you think it would take everyone to notice? I mean, we, we, could, we could just have, like, Pedro record some stuff on a loop and then... Just yeah, I, think, a, I think most people would just tune out. A giggle track. It'd be great. We can make it happen. All right. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Too dark. Too dark. Too dark. Anyways. <laughs> Acer Predator X27 144 hertz. G-Sync HDR monitor pre-orders open. But ouch. You got to pay the iron price. That's right, man. 27 inch of UHD, not 4K, you lying bastards of G-Sync HDR monitor. Goodness. Uh... Looks really exciting until you kind of get down to the price, Pedro. Isn't it? Uh, like it's like four dollars, yeah, right? Yeah, no. Uh, so uh, the current uh, version of the Predator X27 is around a thousand dollars. This one will come out at nineteen ninety nine. What exactly are G Sync pedals being made out of? I don't know, uh, unicorn Latin. gold butt picking, gold press latinum <laughs> covered in worthless those, gold. Those, I don't know those, what those they're made of, but apparently they can justify that because my second thought was okay, so these monitors they're not going to sell a ton of them, they're just not. Uh, is the profit margin on those three, four dozen sales that good that they can make? everything back and still make a profit out of that from just those so, two sales instead of making a more affordable one that more people will buy 
So here, here, here's here's the thing, because this is obviously targeted at like either in obscenely rich people or the esports market. Uh, and Ven, Ven you, you you brought the you brought this up a while ago, and like they did market research on this. Like this is the the sweet spot of like the price point that they can they can float before people just entirely scoff at it, right? Now, I I I, I think you know I threw in the you know typical quote of your scientist or I mean, engineers are so preoccupied whether or not they could, right? Um, I think. They've went full retard on this, Acer. Now, uh, Jordan, mm -hmm. you have two UHD displays. I have a UHD display, and a lot of people have UHD displays, except for Pedro. That's a different story for a different Aww, day. Aw, look at his face. Uh. <laughs> I, I think they've jumped the gun on this with that price. It's like, this. fuck you, our technology is the best in the world. And uh, during this week, even uh, AMD's rolled out, and they're like, TVs are getting free sync, bitches. We're going to be rolling it out. It's even going to be on Xbox yeah. and PlayStation and all that. Wake up, Jordan. Um, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can actually get Dell's Ultra Sharp 27 inch UHD has everything this thing does, minus the 144 hertz, which really for one point five thousand it, dollars. It's the G Sync, man. It's the G Sync that's driving up that price. The Ultra Sharp uh, has G Sync. Yeah. And it's, do you know what? Uh, do you know what for five hundred dollars less? Five hundred dollars less. Do you know what that G Sync, the Ultra Sharp, does, man? It spares you the fucking embarrassment of having this hideous thing on your goddamn desktop. That's what it does. But it, it's like the comparison between FreeSync and G Sync. Uh, that uh, G Sync module can't possibly introduce a fifty to eighty percent markup on the price of a monitor. It just can't. It can't be made out of gold press, latinum, or unicorn butt pickings. It can if they think they can sell it. And they have been selling. That's that's the thing. They, they wouldn't keep doing it if it wasn't making them money. Fuck's mm -hmm. sake, NVIDIA. It's, listen, I don't know. This is the mon This is targeted at, I'm going to guess, 13 to 17-year-old males living at home with a trust fund and a nice allowance because... Even then, 27 inch for $2,000, I'm going to have a fuckload more monitor than 27 inches. Yeah, right. You can and, get... and, that's the, and that's the other thing. Like, 27. <laughs> speaking as someone with monitors. two 28 inch 4K panels in front of them, mm -hmm. that's kind of like the bare minimum because things tend to get a little squinty right. once you go sub 28 inch. So, I, 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 don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know. But well, at, least, at least we can use them to watch anime titties. G synced anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, Gog. Uh our certain still of visual novels now. Um they the the folks at Good Old Games, or I guess they're just Gog now, reacted to the whole Steam taking down porny games and said, you know what? We'll we'll sell your we'll sell your smut and we'll take our cut. <laughs> so um they got a couple uh new releases, or not new, relatively new, Higurashi when they cry, which I'm pretty sure is one of those ones where like someone gets their head cut off near the end. I might be mistaken that. Uh, there's Faults, Sunrider, Eden. There, it's uh, anime, anime booby games. If that's if that's your jam, more power to you. You can buy Mongog the DRM free. And if you're someone who pirates anime booby, booby games, <laughs> boogie games, lo and behold, you, your your ship has sailed. Your ship has arrived. <laughs> Somebody's got to keep talking. I'm going for a show title right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, the thing here is, I just love. You know, for all the criticism I have and will leverage at uh, GOG until the end of times, as long as they keep supporting "quote unquote" Linux as they have been lately, um, I do have to recognize that they basically turned around and bitch slapped Valve. It's like, yeah, that's what I think about your little attitude regarding uh, porny visual novels and anime titties. It's like, here we go. There's some for you. I don't know, man. Well uh, the only thing that well stuck played. out to me in the article, to quote, is that acclaimed games revered for their intricate artwork and stimulating scenes. I was like, you know what, Gog? You can fuck right off. Seriously? All right. Listen, they're stimulating something. Let's just be they're real with it. Let's just yes. be real with each other. Because, listen, most of this stuff, 99% of it's poorly drawn soft core prawn, man. And if you're being wicked generous... With something vaguely resembling a game element thrown in, just so it's just not like straight, straight up softcore porn. And you know what? I'm not judging. 
I'm not, man. Not even the slightest. But do yourself a favor. Don't lie to yourself. You know, like what you like. Own that business. But don't, no, I, I'm playing this for the store. No, you're not. You know you're not. Come on. You know, you know, you know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll counter that. Some, some, some porn actually has some decent plot. I can't speak for any of these games, though. Hmm. Cannot. All right. Uh, what do I we have, have played a... the Honey Pop because someone gave it to me. Someone in Shat Realm gave it to uh, me. What do you mean, someone? I guarantee you, it was Atomic. <laughs> I'm not no. entirely sure it was Atomic. But no, maybe it, was, it wasn't Atomic. atomic. <laughs> it was some, someone else gave us all copies of Honey Pop. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. I want, yeah, I someone like gave us all copies. So I played it, like but that's it. Maybe, maybe they sold that. I don't know. Yeah. Up next. So, we're still doing this in 2018, current year argument. So, uh, Tech Radar Pro has put out a bit of an article uh, uh, saying, or titled, uh, The Best Linux Distro for Gaming in 2018. Yes, we're doing Arch! this particular song and dance again. So, uh, their picks were, uh, to go through them very quickly, Fedora Game Spin, Laka, uh, Sparky Linux Game Over, the Ubuntu Game Pack, and SteamOS. I... <sighs> okay. Alright. I, I give up. It... Oh, <laughs> how? <laughs> this, this, this is so much of a puff piece, man. Like... <laughs> this this is giving Philo Doe a run for its money. So for, for, first off, gaming on Linux these days is either get grabbing stuff off itch, installing it from your packages repository, or installing Steam. Eight, 85, I'll 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 be generous. I'll say eighty five percent of all Linux gaming is is Steam gaming. I was people yeah. playing games through Steam, and as long as your operating system has relatively recent libraries and a relative and a non 2.6 kernel i think you're in the clear should be good quite possibly man uh i agree with you but this is not a relevant thing in 2018 and i know somebody's screeching they're like but no this particular spin it, yeah the performance is not going to be within the margin of error you use whatever you have man i mean if is there even a clear leader for gaming performance in 2018 pedro there was a clear loser, was being the uh, key term there, because Unity is no longer being officially maintained. There's the unofficial uh, team that's still working on it. But yeah, the, uh, the all the like comparison between the different desktop environments and whatnot that we've seen, uh, Unity was always the one that performed the worst when it came to games. And it's you, gone even, now. even then, like when, when when you're talking about like running desktop components, unless you're running something like GNOME three, the difference in between the, the performance delta between all the various desktop environments are so negligible, you you won't be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. You you literally mm -hmm. won't. Maybe on laptops, I don't know. That could still be a thing, but you know, it... yeah, limited hardware. It's always going to be more pronounced that difference. But I think it's safe to say don't you don't need a strange moon variant of a distribution for gaming. I I I do think though that maybe some of the mystery master developers were reading this article, and I think they got a little scared off. But we'll talk about that. Could be. I was just really surprised mm -hmm. that this came from Tech Radar. All of this business this is going to be in our show notes if you want to go check it out after the fact. But yeah, that's <laughs> definitely a thing. Uh, Team Fortress Two. Why are we talking about this not in the Steam segment? Well, because it's not actually Team Fortress 2. It is a fan game written in Godot called Cart Crawlers. And it's essentially like an enter the gungeon type game for um, with, that uses uh, TF2 lookalikes. And incoming cease and desist in three, two. I mean, it works. Like you download it, you, you set your CH mod plus exit. Uh, and it, it ran on my laptop. Um, it didn't pick up the touchpad for the little cursor thing for the aim, but everything else worked. Um, so it, it's definitely there. It's fan game. Um, so if you if you can't get enough of the TF2 iconic <laughs> characters, and I don't know, want to push a card around, this is this is your game. It's free, so you know, do with it what you will. It's free, man. But I mean, it numbed a big old floppy rooster when I tried to launch it. Yeah, it's CH mod plus X step one for this thing. Um, it, it just noped. It, it couldn't figure out the screen geometry for whatever bizarre reason. 
The, mm. That uh, error that you posted in the show notes, that usually happens when it tries to spawn uh, at a resolution that your monitor doesn't support. What the fuck are you trying to spawn at? The 3840 by 2160 <laughs> doesn't happen. No, when it tries to create a full screen window in a resolution that your monitor doesn't support, that's mm -hmm. the error code that you get right there. I used to get that a lot on 1366 uh, by 768 laptops. So Again, Pedro, what resolution do you think this monitor doesn't support? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> It it could be I, trying to spawn in 320 by 240. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've noticed that with like Shadowrun Boston Lockdown, it always tries to spawn in like 520 by 3160 or by 2160. Oh, don't, don't you always get a little queasy when you see that little box kind of jerk around? You're like, oh boy, I don't know. And then it yep. comes up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, good on them for making that. And, you know, it, it's Valve. They're, they're probably not going to see and Valve is not yeah. going to give a damn. Right. They're like, hey, man, people no. are making fun. No, you, you put a price tag on it, ass grass. Mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you're Black Mesa. Then they're going to invite you into the store so you can perpetually work yeah, on a map you for you do it right years. here so we get a cut. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, we got some bad news. Uh, something that we have covered is uh, Linux will not be included in the Mist 25 Kickstarter. What is that? Never heard of it. It was a re-release of the original Mist. I think they were going to throw some rivet in there and all that business. And they did a Kickstarter, and initially they were like, hey, man, well, Linux is a possibility. Who? This is uh, Linux underscore gaming. They wrote a foreteller. He wrote, hey, man, three days left. I need to know for sure if you'll support Linux before I give you some wet, stinky cash. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. They wrote back, um, Cyan Worlds Incorporated, and he's like, the Linux option has been investigated. Due to the large variety of Linux versions, yes, we're using that excuse in 2018, uh, the cost of development and support, the time and resources, trust me, this gets better when I put a bow on this, included to include Linux in the Kickstarter campaign at any reward tier, Linux will not be included in the Miss 20 Kickstarter. We're continuing to look at Linux options, for all our games for possible future. Okay, now. They read the Tech Writer article. Here's the thing, Brad. Uh, time and resources. Time and resources. Okay. They don't have the time or the resources to do this. Motherfuckers. Uh, you made two plus million dollars on this Kickstarter. You're like, well, maybe they just got their goal. Their initial goal is 247000 How 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 much hookers and blow is in this game's budget to come All out of with a straight fucking face and go, we just don't have time or resources, man. Cause we, we got like 1.6 million extra dollars to, you know, blackjack, whatever, fuck off. Um, I don't like it, man. I mean, I do not like the fractured Linux ecosystem excuse in 20 best you can do is say, Hey man, steam us, target that out. Everyone else will figure it out or do an LTS with Kombutu like Feral does. Why don't you just come out and be like, yeah, fuck Linux. We don't want to deal with it. Then at least I can respect you for being honest. It's like, we don't because want to support Linux. Linux. Just say that. No. Uh, I, I, again, this, this, is, this is literally the result of someone, some marketing PR guy Googling, what is a Linux? And then seeing, wait, you can't just install Linux? There's like other Linuxes. It's not no, available it's, it's in the Windows Store. What? It probably is though. Right. Yeah, the the, the Linux version of Mist. It is. The it actually is Linux. available on the Windows Store. So, <laughs> That's but it. it's oh, man. it's really annoying. It yes, every single distribution that wants to remain relevant in 2018, including Fedora has made goddamn sure that Steam runs. So if you have your Linux game on Steam for Linux, you don't need to target anything else, you dumb fucking idiot. It's just, hey, Pedro, you need to be nice. If you're mean to business decisions are made on fee-fees, don't hurt their fee-fees. No, the, the, see, these guys are not CD Projekt Red. Those guys made decisions based on oh, fees. Oh, oh, so if, we're, if, we, if we gobble enough cocks, they'll, they'll change their mind? Yes. Okay. We'll, 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 give, we'll send them hugs on Twitter after the show. Maybe not. Um, I, 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 want, I want a hug. Fuck you. Uh, up next. 
Uh, yes, yeah. Godot. Uh, they're having a bit of a Kickstarter. Well, uh, actually, it's not them specifically. It's uh, two people from GameDev.TV. Uh, ben and... Ben Tristam what's, and GameDev.TV are kickstarting at Godot. Yes. Uh, uh, they are uh, basically yeah, 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 trying Bert to create the other guy. a tutorial uh, slash how-to slash uh, basically the way that you use Godot uh, if you don't know anything about it. They are creating a little video series. Uh, it's a little course, as it were. And it's on Kickstarter right now. They started uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, something like that. And there's about two weeks or so remaining. Uh, they're about a third of the way through. They're asking for 30,000 pounds and they currently have uh, 12,100, pardon me, 164. So it's, it's going to be a bit of a stretch. Uh, they have a little... Uh, widgety tool in the article where they say that uh, they're going to need 149 pounds per day to succeed. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a stretch, but this this is a good thing. Uh, this is something that you should actually, if you like Doe and if you um, want to see more games being developed with it, you really should kick him a pound, just a single pound. If everyone listening to this show gave him a pound, They'd probably make it. They, they, they'd have four pounds. That's, that's <laughs> this, this is uh, true. I'm just looking at the um, highest uh, reward thing, the 295 pounds or more. And oh, you get, oh man, Jordan, you are Technicolor. Baby. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that makeup was looking so good. Well, I hope you got the warranty on that webcam. <laughs> um, but you'll get access to any of the future courses they make. And somebody who makes uh the occasional instructional video and puts it on the internet i i say good on you because uh mm -hmm. you, you guys don't know what you're in yeah. for uh and 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 i mean like using using uh as, centering the lessons around an open source tool is just a really good thing and they're, mm -hmm. they're saying like well part, part of this is going to be well you're going to use a lot of the built-in godot stuff but here's how you go and fuck with it if you need to change something mm -hmm. and this is actually going to be a fairly comprehensive course they're expecting it to be about 20 plus hours um so it's it's pretty good uh they've done these guys have done other courses on udemy though on game design for unity and unreal engine hmm. uh but godot has a significantly lower barrier for entry um just in general you, there's no licensing fees it'll work on basically every platform they got vulcan support they got the open gl um they even they uh their, their license allows people to take their code and um Turn into something that will run on, say, the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I do so, want to say this, though. Um, if you didn't get the memo and you have a Godot based game on the Android Play Store and they banned it, uh, they're working on it. Yeah, I, I saw that post on uh, Google Plus. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, give give these guys some money. They uh, Godot is an awesome tool, and more people need to use it. Uh, yeah. Well, in the North it's... American space, apparently in Europe and South America, everyone loves Godot, but. Uh, yeah, a uh, tool is o is only as good as uh, instructional people know how to man. use it. <laughs> it's not the and tool. It's if the this tool little course is going to help people actually develop more games on Godot, I'm all for it. Well, listen, man. I mean, game engines like Linux distros definitely rock like that. You tend to, uh, when you're first starting out with something, you go for the ones with the most available training wheels. That you mm -hmm. know, when you do searches, that's why Arch is such a popular thing. Tons of training wheels laying out there for it and it, that used to be like Ubuntu. you would do a search you know, i was running always running fedora and every time i searched them i got really good at converting Ubuntu dependencies <laughs> mentally to what i would need for fedora you know to track that down and mm -hmm. translate that business fine yeah. now um, more resources is good maybe i'll take a course that'd be fun um shove it shove it real good all up in your face <laughs> We're talking about it, man. It is out not point one point two B rolls right off the tongue. Hey, it's been a hot minute since we've seen a game made with the Blender game engine. And uh yeah, after firing this up and playing it, I was like, yeah, there, there's a reason they no longer do that. And it's a thing. You can play it. Uh I tried it. It does work, and it's not horrible horribly unoptimized but holy f 
fuck does it? it you just know it's a blender game. What was that other game uh, that was supposed to be pretty big? Uh, Shodden? No, no, no. It was. Yes. Um, yeah. It was. They made a movie about it. Could have been. Uh, new things, yeah. new flip kicks. Not. I mean, this game's been around for a while. It did say. See, this is like one of those issues. Is when the game starts up, and it's a skating game, and. Mm-hmm. I was like, that that could be interesting. You know, it could be like some Tony. Listen, it probably doesn't suck as much as the last Tony Hawk game. All right, let's be fair <laughs> to it. And it's completely free. But when the game starts up, it says controller not detected. And I was like, man, there is fuck all chance of me spending the time to get the Steam controller up and running with this. So that's the like, uh It's probably not going to be easy to get the Steam controller running unless they already have it, th- that kind of support built in. Unplugged because yes, it. it can work as a regular X input controller, but it doesn't by default. So <laughs> it's not going to be easy. <laughs> I'm I'm sure I'm sure some loser has put together an SC controller config for it. And by loser, I mean lovely, lovely human being. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, we 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 haven't really gotten much in the way of like good sp- skateboarding games. I played a lot of like Tony Hawk Pro Skater back in the day. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So like, I I, I enjoy I enjoy that sort of game. Um, though, given given some of like the 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 gifs and sort of gameplay footage here, it looks pretty janky. It's pretty it's primitive. Wonders. I mean, this is like a PS One era with an HD texture pack. But hey, man, it's, it's yeah. better than nothing. Question mark. Question mark? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Is it? Check, check, check it out. Link to us in our show notes. Make the make your own damn mind up. But speaking of not making up your mind, you should go totally listen to us for this next part as we will inform your opinion about Horizon Chase Turbo. Turbo, 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 Turbo. Well, we're here. It's chair acquisition time. Throwing chairs at uh, Horizon Chase Turbo. It's developed by Aquari- or Aquarius. Aquarium. Game Studio. It's developed on the Unity engine. Uh, you can pick it up for around. Well, they they uh, they didn't stick with the uh, or they they have um, different prices per region, which is kind of nice if you live in the UK and you're only paying 15 pounds. If you're in Canada, you're paying 22 pounds. The average in the middle at the US uh, current current US dollar is 19.99. So what is it? Thrilling arcade racing game inspired by the super fun, straight to the point classic racing games of the 90s. This is the chair, and this is the chair QA edition. This is where we take a game, we play it for a little bit, we talk about it, we give our thoughts about it, maybe do a bit of quality assurance that the devs should have done before putting it on the Steam store, and then give you a final score based on chairs. One chair means that it's garbage, two chairs means it's meh, three chairs means it's pretty good, four chairs means it's awesome. We apply them to our categories of doom, makes with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So I guess let's uh, let's kick it off. Then how'd the Horizon Chase Turbo work for you? It ran like a dream, man. Uh, unlike Pedro, who's like, oh, I can't stand sixty frames a second. I need all the frames. <laughs> I, I left V Sync on uh, 1080, 60, 2160, 60, and you know that is seventeen ten. Still haven't done that upgrade. Ryzen seven seventeen hundred. Um, yeah. Nothing, no issues on it. Full screen works, big picture, no problem. Windowed, no problem. Clean bill of health, man. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I I did this on the uh, on my laptop just because I was bored on the toilet. <laughs> and on the... Wait, wait, the wait, 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 wait. We just got to tap the brakes <laughs> on that. Now, you bring your laptop into the loo. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. All right. Inquiring mind wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever let's, touch let's Jordan's see. laptop. Um <laughs> whoever touches my laptop is gonna is gonna end up looking like what's his name from raiders of the lost ark <laughs> near the end and yeah and, and anyways on, on on both uh yeah it has um I, I was getting about 60 fps i left vsync on as well just because like vsync's one of those weird things under linux where it either like kills your performance or it doesn't really do anything this is one of those cases where i think it didn't really do much mm-hmm. uh and so yeah uh 60 fps at 1080 on uh, both fairly well, these days, low end systems. I didn't actually try it out on the on the big box just because I didn't get a chance. But uh, yeah, no, no real issues there. Pedro, you were yeah, uh, no. you're, you're, things were struggling with the 1080. It seems not really. Uh, it held 60 just fine. In fact, the uh, the footage you're looking at right now was recorded with VSync on, uh, just because yes, 
It uh, does average at 550 FERPs. Uh, if you disable VSync, uh, the amount of coil wide that I was listening to was not pleasant. So, eh, yeah, uh, I ended up turning it on and it, it's fine. It's uh, like Jordan said, uh, VSync on Linux either really fucks you up or it doesn't seem to really do anything. And in this case, all it does is limit the, um, the FERPs down to... 60 or whatever the refresh rate on your screen happens to be now there was one thing about this game is it tickled that side of my brain that uh, is always looking for tearing and you can't see it on this track that's uh on video right now but uh, there are some of the tracks where the color differences are so pronounced that as you're going stupidly fast down the track it makes it look like it's tearing but if you look at the car it's not so it's that uh, almost uh, caused me to dig in a chair, but no, that's just an optical illusion type thing. So f full score from me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's four chairs for mixed with the working shiny and sounds wise. I mean, every, every, I, I think we're all in agreement. Everything looks fine here. It's not like it's, it's criminally ugly or anything. The one thing that got mm. me though, is the soundtrack is super repetitive. I've, there, there's one song and i can really only describe it as like a spoopy techno bar mitzvah soundtrack techno bar and mitzvah I can only... show title <laughs> techno spoopy, bar mitzvah. Spoop, spoopy techno bar mitzvah and um like I, I i keep hearing it every time i get into a race and it's it's really annoying like it's distracting me from the track just because like god i hate this stupid song <laughs> Um, but yeah, visually, I mean, it looks fine, right? It has that sort of pseudo cell shaded aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. trying to look like a, like an old school arcade racer game. Uh, I, I think it gets the job done, but that's not pretty. It's not particularly distinct. What do you, am I right? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, just by the look of it, it doesn't look bad. I mean, it genuinely at first I was like, wait a minute, you know, this kind of looks like hundreds of other mobile racing games. Then I found out. Uh, not even digging, just a simple Google search that it really, really looks like one in particular. It's called Horizon Chase World Tour because it's available <laughs> in the Play Store for free. And well, it's by the same people. <laughs> yep, and it looks exactly like this game um, because it is this game. And what does it look like? Hey, man, you're dealing with a low-poly visual experience without, to their credit, any of the pixelization nonsense that we, the game we were talking about earlier in the uh, steam segment soundtrack i mean it has bleeps and bloops uh the soundtrack itself it is period accurate i'll give it that and it's completely inoffensive mm -hmm. uh i i didn't hate it but i tended to play this without the headphones on i was just listening to some background noise and stuff like that i mean it didn't uh engage me pedro yeah it's back in the olden times this uh, kind of works up to my biggest complaint about this game. Uh, it was um, when these games were, you know, par for the course. The short draw distance was a symptom of the poor hardware performance. Nowadays, it's a stylistic choice. A stylistic choice which, in my opinion, doesn't do this particular game any favors. It's... Uh, if you're doing a retro-inspired game, either go whole hog and earn the uh, hipster pixel title like uh, Slipstream did do, do uh, you, when we talked about it. Do you think it's like retro-inspired and they're sticking to that, or it's more that uh, this was originally developed around mobile devices? Uh, yes. It's, uh, it, they figured, you know what? The retro style of gameplay where most of the mechanics basically play themselves really works uh, on a mobile platform because limited hardware and everything else. So yeah, the two kind of go hand in hand. It's not one or the other, it's both. And I can see that and I don't hate the visuals or the audios. It's... Uh, I, uh, the previous game we threw chairs at from uh, Aquarius was Ballistic Overkill. And I criticized that game for having absolutely no charm. It was generic white dude the shooter. This one, on the other hand, they picked the stylistic choice and they stuck to it. So, hey, no complaints here. 
Yeah, I, I, will, I will say that um, the, the draw distance is definitely something that kind of bugged me because you'll, 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 be, you'll be getting a, to a point during a race where you're going just like super fast and you're nailing all the turns and so on and so forth. And then like mm -hmm. something that you should have seen in front of you kind of just pops into place because they didn't, they didn't draw it before it shows up and then you just kind of slam into something. Well, this, that usually gets really annoying. It is, but I mean, uh, it teaches you to... This is something I'll talk about more in the fun section. You can't pay attention to anything other than what's directly fucking in front of you. You look at what speed you're going, you're dead. You look at how much petrol mm -hmm. you have left, you're dead. Um, you check the map, you're dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, let's get mm -hmm. into controls. Yeah, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, controls, man. Oh, that's uh, two chairs for shiny sounds. Controls. I mean, I, I don't know, Pedro. You get you, you're the control stickler. You got any issues? You know, the cars turn by themselves on the corners. I guess this is very much uh, something that you would see on a mobile platform. Uh, and you just really use the steering keys to make sure it doesn't go off the track and to attempt to dodge the AI cars. Uh, I guess it would really take someone deliberately wanting to make the controls horrible in this game for uh, them to cock it up. And they didn't. So... As far as I'm concerned, the controls in the Horizon uh, Chase Turbo are perfectly acceptable. Hmm. Once you wrap your head around the fact that the car kind of turns in by itself. Jordan, Sometimes. You had an interesting way of playing this game. <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason. Because I, I started doing it while I was playing on the laptop. Uh, where I was just playing with the arrow keys instead of the controller, which is what I usually um, use for games like this. Um, but yeah, um, I, when, when I switched to controller, I found that I was having a harder time, like making turns and whatnot. And when I switched back to using the arrow keys, um, I was able to nail turns a lot better. So uh, hmm. the, that's, that's just, that's just a weird point. It's just an observation, no particular criticism against the game. Hmm. What, what about you, Ben? Hey man, I tried it with the Areola controller, the Steamy controller. It worked. Default layout, it's logical. Controls, I mean, for what they are, man, you're basically dealing with three buttons. They're tight, allowed me to reliably slam into the ass end of the AI opponents with the utmost precision. What I will say is this, uh, there, there's not much skill to going around corners. You turn left, turn left, or turn right. You just slam it down, and unless you're just being stupid on purpose, it's going to go around the corners. No issues whatsoever. But yeah, it looks like... Uh, Another clean bill of health for all the controls. But we do have yes. our subjective category that we have fun with. Yeah, so four chairs for controls. Ven, did you have fun with this? Hey, man. Uh, casually just sitting back fucking around during the week, I stomped. I murderated Pedro. I <laughs> killed Foxy. So the game had that going for it. And, the and then, then, then you raced some cars around? Well, you know, <laughs> then I woke up. Uh <laughs> You know, every every boy can have fantasies. Uh, my working theory here, if you're watching the game, is the AI, your opponents, that's all you can have in this, is they have rear view mirrors. I don't have rear view mirrors. I mean, them having rear view mirrors is basically the only thing I can come up to explain how they managed to swerve in front of me with just the utmost precision, because they do. I mean, I don't like it. It's basically dodge cars, the game. That is the primary goal in this is to avoid the other fucking cars that will head towards you very maliciously um i do like that it did a very legitimate job of recreating arcade racers of old with the mm -hmm. bonus soda of the upgraded graphics from a mobile game uh what i really don't like about it though is winning races and getting better times is I want to say totally, but I would say wicked heavily reliant on how much of the how much of a dick the AI feels like being for that particular round. I mean, you genuinely a lot of times can just restart the race, like because it'll just fuck fuck you right at the beginning or something like that. Uh, you can see in the video right there. There is a petrol mechanic, which I just think is wholly mm -hmm. unnecessary. I have run out of it twice. And it was like, ah, oh, one of them, I was going to win the race too, which really sucked. Uh, a big negative, no online multiplayer. Don't like that. And just right here at the end, you know, 1999 for a mobile port, just, just a, little on the, a little on the steep side. So there's that. I think if I had to say I, the only fun I've had with this is 
knowing that Pedro and Foxy were playing it and trying to beat their times, but it, this is it. I mean, this is over and over and it's a grind to get the tokens because guess what? You used to be able to buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I mean, the, the, the petrol mechanic is kind of a weird addition and it really only comes into effect if you've met, if you, if you hit the, if you hit some of the petrol cans, like maybe once or twice throughout the race, you're good. It's just the odd time that you miss both goes at them is when the lack of fuel starts to become an issue. There were a couple times, yeah, where I ran out of fuel, but I still made it across the finish line at first, <laughs> which is like, yeah, oh, fuck you, AI. And yeah, I, I also have to agree with them. The the AI mechanic of just like stopping in front of you is the most infuriating part of this game by far. Of just like, you're, 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 you're going at a good clip, you make a turn and oh, no, this guy's gonna like compromise his position mm-hmm. just to fuck with you, and it it gets even worse when like multiple racers start to gang up on you. Oh, these all start because they don't mm-hmm. care. The you get caged in. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they, they they will attempt. They'll just straight up attempt to box you in. What? Well, but you know what? I actually I didn't hate this game. Um, and th- it's it's a rarity for me in racing games. I usually don't get too into them, but um. I, I I guess I kind of started to grok what's going on in this game. I even I even beat Ven and Pedro on a couple of uh, tracks, which is surprising for me. I'm sure if they actually put in a couple minutes of effort, they would cream my score. But I still beat them. I'm going to take my victories where I can get them. Um, yeah, the I, 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 it's it's a perfectly fun, fine arcade racer. If you like that sort of game, if you like going to arcades and playing it, this will this will definitely do something for you. Um, the lack of draw distance does get kind of annoying, and yeah, the the whole the whole um, the whole uh, NPC driver stopping in front of you makes me kind of want to get a dash cam for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I, I I liked it, and that's a rarity for me in racing games. So take make make of that what you will. Yeah. It's a great game if, say, you have children and you want to do some local multiplayer with them. And local multiplayer is all you'll be doing because it doesn't have online multiplayer. Uh, it's it's not the kind of game I see myself obsessing over. Not in the same way that I do with Distance. Uh, because in Distance, yeah, you're actually required to drive the car. And, and here, cheat. the game... And cheat. The game really does, yes, you could cheat a little bit and go off the track and just ride the side of the buildings instead. Uh, But uh, in this one, the cars kind of drive themselves and all you're doing is a very limited input. And it's... I get... It, it, it creates a bit of a dissonance in my brain. It's like, I want to play the game, and the other side of me is going, I see what they are trying to do here. It doesn't particularly appeal to me, but I see what they're trying to do here. So, you know, seeing what this particular Brazilian uh, team can do, they've done Ballistic Overkill before, and now they've done this game. I am very curious to see what else uh, they can do. Uh, though, you know, old school style game as it is it it was very obvious that there was a lot of uh rubber banding happening uh especially when you're trying to beat your own time because say you finish like third uh on your first go around the track and then on your second go around you're already in first place and your ghost is still ahead of you yeah that right there is just okay. proof of Here, the rubber here's something banding i'm gonna throw happening. at you right there the rubber banding so you you get so much PTSD uh, from trying to dodge these fucking cars that mm-hmm. even when you're racing against your ghost, how many times did you swerve away from your ghost? You're like fuck, all the time, right? All the freaking time. <laughs> it's it's really annoying, and uh, you know I don't hate it. It's uh, it's simple almost to a fault, but I really don't hate it. It's it's all right. <laughs> Mm-hmm, yeah, the, the 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 price tag, like Ven mentioned, though, is kind of steep for twenty two Canadian is. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. May, may, maybe if that goes on sale for half, definitely give this a pickup. And anyways, um, I, I guess that's that's two chairs for fun, and we tally it all up. And Horizon Chase Turbo gets gets three chairs. It's pretty good. I it's think, good. I think uh, none of us. One of the things yeah, I guess I'd want to say is uh, try it for free on your Android device first. 
Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you, hell! You can even pair your Steam controller with it and mm-hmm. give it give it a whirl that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good times. All right. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. That's it for the chair acquisition. Coming up next, we have three pieces of hate mail. That's like two more than what we usually get. <laughs> and here we are. It's the end of the show. If you've made it this far, I salute you. This is the uh, end. <laughs> and uh, lately, I've been railing on about how you guys and gals and everyone else have uh, sort of kind of uh, been dropping the ball when it comes to sending us some hate mail. But this week, well, this week, there's some manner of redemption to be had. Uh, we have three bits of hate mail. And hey, if next week you'd like to have your own bit of hate mail featured right here, Go to lewisgamecast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form, make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little drop down thing. It's the default, but sometimes it, uh, it may get screwy, so make sure that's the one you pick. You can ask Jordan for relationship advice, Jordan, over there, uh, and um, also send some feedback for that Wednesday show, what uh, myself, Ven, and Jill do. That's our uh, adult show. Yes. <laughs> Adult. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this week, what do we have up first? Coming up first from NMAG, he writes in about the reviews, man. I enjoy the long reviews during the Jericho personally. Just my two cents. And I'm pretty much always an audio listener. Or perhaps a second feed with the full reviews would be an idea too. But I don't mind it. So yeah, we're still playing around with that. We're moving yeah. stuff around. We are desperately not changing stuff for the sake of change because that's a stupid idea. And I've seen a lot of shows do that. And I'm like, let's just move things around. I think ultimately what we're looking for is a more streamlined, less clunky version. So all the same bullshit, but faster. Fast shit. Okay. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's, the, it's, 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 it's like a high fiber diet for your Linux. Listen, man, it, it, it's the Vin way of doing shit, which is exactly like the wrong way, only faster. So, mm-hmm. do you guys have some right, thoughts well, on that? Yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm, I'm all for more feedback on, on the, on the chair acquisition, right? Yeah. Yes. We, the part, part, part of the reason is like, yeah, we, we, we don't know what's gonna work, and what works for us may not work for you guys, and if it doesn't work for you, then too bad. <laughs> Make your own podcast. Yeah, tell us exactly what you want. So we, Jordan goes out of his way to <laughs> we do will the polar steer away ups. from it as much as possible. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, up, up next, um, this is from Kalsta. He's talking about XFCE tearing. Giggity. And he says, or they say, having failed to find the love for Gnome Shell on Ubuntu, I tried a few DE variants and recently settled on Ubuntu. 18.04 with NVIDIA 396.24. Yet, despite seeming the best fit, I find that web pages in NVIDIA are susceptible to tearing using the default compositor. I've been I've read that switching to Compton can help fix this. Before I commit, is this the best thing to do when considering gaming? Or are there other options? Can you please cat your Ubuntu foo? I'm, I'm gonna go cat. first. Get this All out right. of my system. Not not what you think, baby. Not what you think. Uh, <laughs> Okay, you did the GNOME thing. You installed uh, standard Ubuntu. You didn't need to install Ubuntu in order to get the XFC experience. You could just type sudo apt-get install XFCE4 and hit enter. Then I'm just saying pro tip for anyone out there listening. Yeah. That's the thing. Though, I guess, if you really want to just have, not have the GNOME clutter... And just use the uh, the XFC stuff. Installing Zubuntu is probably the right way to go at it, especially if you don't have anything there yet, and you're still trying to see what fits you best. I can I can see that. I can. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Uh, Compton is great at killing tearing for just regular desktop use. Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend uh, forcing Compton compositing while you're gaming. Uh, it, it's not going to kill your performance significantly, but it will introduce other issues. So if you uh, run Compton, I included my config in the uh, in the show notes. You can have a look at those. 
Uh, there's uh, the only sp uh, effect that it has is the fade in for the windows because that's the one I use on the laptops and slower processors means that some windows would every now and again show some graphical corruption as they just showed up in Compton. But if you add that little step into the fade, it uh, it actually got rid of it really, really nicely. So I keep that in. Um, for games, if you if your key point there for uh, is gaming, um, the NVIDIA Forceful Composition Pipeline, just uh, go to the NVIDIA settings, enable those for all the monitors you have going on, or at least the monitor you game on, and just save the settings as etc. Uh, X11, XR Conf. That's it. Hmm. Um, yep. Well, I guess you said, Jordan, do you, do you have any uh, pro tips for XFCE and tearing? I know you run it. Um, I mean, other than use Compton, not really. Um, yeah. The what if if you want if you want to maybe fine tune it, there's a decent starting one on the ArchWiki that like has some same defaults in place, and everything mm -hmm. is like commented and enumerated. Uh, so that's always nice. Uh, I guess the both of you posted your Compton.confs. Uh, I, I did. Show, that's um, right. Especially if you like, you're on lower. See, mine works in two different ways. Uh, my Compton config, if you want to throw that in there, it gets rid of every last little bit of whooshy bullshit that is in the default <laughs> config. It gets rid of shadows, anything that you might have to worry about on a lower end system. But if you get a high end system, even better performance. Uh, yeah, Pedro, uh, I want to say like step one is disable the built in compositor with XFC4 before you do the Compton. Oh, thing. yeah. Yes. No, no. That, yes. that, that, that one's just bad. And make sure you're using the GLX backends. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. it's going to be all CPU accelerated. And if you have NVIDIA, yeah, I absolutely agree. You do the full screen composition pipeline on, but that's mm -hmm. better to mm -hmm. set in your X or config file because the one in the NVIDIA driver panel works when it feels like it, I found out. <laughs> so... I've, yeah, I've if you use the NVIDIA, NVIDIA settings that, GUI so... to save the XOR conf, it will just load it, and it won't need to load the NVIDIA settings configurations. Mm. That, that, that was always something that bugged me about the NVIDIA settings app too. Is that like the shortcut it puts in your in your applications menu is entirely useless if you want those settings to persist because you got to run the app as root otherwise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to, which I mean has nothing to do with this. It's just, bit of annoying bullshit yeah, that's another thing and uh jordan and i will both tell you if you have multiple monitors you need to launch compton not com you know, compton on each one yeah um yeah. there's I, actually on the same arch wiki page they actually do have a handy little bash loop you can set up as like a function in your uh when you go to the startup apps in xfce that'll just go through all your monitors and enable compton on it that's which good. is pretty handy uh, I guess uh, we got one left, and that is from Roberto, right? Pedro, take yes, it away. Yes, indeed. So uh, Roberto was talking or, about Roboro, the wine release Roboro. talk from last week's show. Uh, or Roberto, yes. <laughs> uh, so oh my God. he's asking, is a man wrong for running wine to play black and white? Antero, bang, bang. Uh <laughs> Am I? Bang. Fire, fire. Anyone love, uh, anyway, love watching the show. I hope an open source re-implementation for Black and White comes out, and also for GTA San Andreas. I'm right there with you, to be honest. I want me some uh, open source uh, GTA re-implementations. Uh, there's already one in the works for GTA 3. Kinda I'm assuming sorta, yeah. once that's done, it'll be easy enough to port uh, Vice City and San Andreas. Yeah, those, those those were all based off of the GTA 3 engine, anyways. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it, it may be one of those things like, oh, this is heavily modified, so it's not going to work. Period. It may be one of those cases, but one can hope, one can dream. One yeah. thing I'll say about wine is, uh, for the intended use case, that I think it is a very good piece of kit is for older stuff like black and white, man. I yeah. or um. And 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 again, it's not it's not a heretic thing if you have like a large library of Windows games before you cut over full time and you still mm -hmm. want to play them. That's the mm -hmm. big contention. Can you imagine? I'm sure it's probably more of a chore to try to get black and white up and running under Windows 10 than it would be under Linux right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> that see oh, that's yeah. a video series. We should we should stream that. Oh, we should race. You know, we'll just do screen share. Do we? Do you know anybody with Windows 10 though? Mm. I have an XPS 13 mm. with Windows 10 in that bag over there. All right, Pedro, you're fired. Um, 
Nah. <laughs> it's my work laptop, uh, man. <laughs> I leave my I leave my Windows work laptop in my desk locked up so that I don't have to look at it unless I add, unless I'm getting paid. I could leave it in my locker, yeah. but it, yeah. Listen, man, this was all shiny. an elaborate ruse just to sniff out the Windows user, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> You know what, fuck it. On that bombshell, let's do this. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, easy, probably the best way. If you're a patron, hop in our Discord. I'm hanging out there. Actually, all three of us hang out there. And we read the stuffs and do that. At Vinstone on Twitter. Uh, don't send me DMs. Uh, just at reply me and I'll get back to you. Not Nothing against DMs. It's just I don't read them. If I follow you, send me a DM. Then I'll get it. That's the thing. It's brilliant. I'm Jordan Swung. I am the ultimate DM. I don't know what that means. Dungeon Master. Uh, you can find me at the... At, at the yeah, Dick the, Mangler. The, the, yeah. <laughs> d d dummy Muncher. Cause, cause, cause Danger I, Monkey. Cause I eat yeah. I am... Yes, you, you can find me at Danger Monkey. No, at The Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Swung on Google+. Plus. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at any of those fun-sounding places... But you can always shout at me at an accounted for on Twitter or plus bit of a on Google Plus. Well, uh, oh, well. then I got a reminder in my Google Calendar to rebalance the Discord audio. Yeah, that that was <laughs> scaring me so fucking bad. I did it during the review segment. So <laughs> it's like I don't want to kill everyone on like episode three hundred one. It's a wrap. We're all deaf now. So it'd be yeah, kind of hey, hard. Do you ever see scanners? That yeah. All right, let's roll some credits because we didn't learn shit this week. <laughs> hey, we, we should. If you running. came here expecting to learn something, you came to the wrong place. I know, right? Are we? Are we not well, gonna... go, go ahead. Wait, 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 no, no, no credits. Yeah, it should be doing. No, credits. we're just not going to have any credits this week. <laughs> Man, we are doing or, or, credits or. this week somehow. <laughs> but we're gonna somehow, we're gonna do the, the credits, credits will show up. <laughs> Give me a minute and we'll, we'll get some credits because, listen, I, I'm not going back and doing this shit in post. Uh, <laughs> All I know is, uh, in you, 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 Realm, you, you, we've ladies and gentlemen, you get an extra like 20 minutes now. of Linux Gamecast Here, watching look, us flounder. The, the, this is backup credits. <laughs> backup credits! Woohoo! Bitches. Still got it done. Uh, uh, uh. Well, watches me flounder live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't get it. Uh, <laughs> episode CCCI. Second producers. Aaron Foxy, Andrew. And oh Bruce. shit! Are we gonna? Are we? Uh, did we? I think we already passed episode CCV. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, we should have done something with that. Probably. <laughs> That's that's Curse unfortunate. You, I, I do... Curse you! <laughs> damn you, Roman numerals! So many, yeah. It was like, damn, we we should have done X. Yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that that legitimately just occurred to me when you're like, oh yeah, so it's CCCI. I'm like, damn, we're past CCV. Damn, fucking Roman numerals. It's terrifying. Damn it, Rome! Why couldn't you use Arabic numerals like Arabia? Like Arabic, uh, <laughs> because then they wouldn't have been called Roman numerals. Rome, where you want I don't to. Know. <laughs> I'm wondering where the fuck it rendered that credits to then. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, there's someone in the NSA just like, why the hell am I just getting Star Wars? This, this, this is a true story. <laughs> and who the hell are these people? <laughs> All right, we love you. Dynafy, see you next week. Bye-bye. Five dudes. <laughs>